Hello! So today we're going to take a look at a few historical references for the banner styles found in the Mandalorian. So here you can see in the shot from Season 3 the types of banners that they have in the Mandalorian. And here's the clip from Excalibur, which is a movie I love, with Captain Jean-Luc Picard there riding up. And you can see the banners in the background of the different family groups in medieval times. This was a standard way for family groups to identify themselves so that you could tell who was who on the battlefield or in events. And for example, here's the wedding between King Arthur and Guinevere, his lady love, and there's Lancelot on the side with his moon eyes. And at their wedding, all of the different family groups have their banners on display showing their support for the new king. But often in medieval times, they would have long swoopy banners that would uh, flail out in the wind when they were riding on their horses. So this is a more traditional type of banner that they would have in medieval times because they were very uh, showy here you get another shot of them. So I tend to think in medieval times, while they did have the vertical banners sometimes, I'm uh, more familiar with the long flowy types of banners. So when I saw the banners in The Mandalorian, as much as I love medieval uh, movies and have a ton of them on DVD, I thought they were much more in style with the Japanese style of banners. And this is from Ron, another movie which I adore and I highly recommend you watch if you haven't seen it. So in Ron, and, and, you know, in Japanese culture and Kagamusha and all the other Japanese movies that I have out there about the samurai era, the different factions would have banners on them and on nearly all of the main soldiers so that they could keep track of where the soldiers were moving around. And when they looked out at a battlefield, they could tell who was who. And also, you know, it was helpful for the soldiers. If the soldiers were fighting, they could tell who was friend and who was foe when everyone was covered with dirt and mud and blood <laughs> when they were having their warfare going on. So there were many reasons that um, medieval knights and samurai wore these kinds of banners to be able to identify each other on the battlefield. So here we've got one group of soldiers leaving a castle and another group of soldiers about to take over the castle. And you can see clearly the types of banners they have to identify which side they're on. In this case, another scene from Ron, We've got a bunch of, the, we'll call them the yellow soldiers, not to give away too much of the plot, a bunch of the yellow soldiers uh, storming in, and they are now working with the red soldiers, and the two sets of them are all uh, invading in here. And it makes it easy for the generals to be able to keep track of who is who, and where the different groups are, and so on. So there are all sorts of reasons that banners are used to identify family groups or clans or whatever the... Um, culture is. So back to the Mandalorian, you can see that they've got these banners and the banners again here represent the different groups and subgroups. So we've got the two main banners here and we'll talk about that in a second, but I just want to give a general sense here of the use of the banners, that we've got banners representing different groups and subgroups and they are a part of the culture, the way that they are representing themselves and remaining true both to the Mandalorian as a whole and to their subgroups. And I just want to notice in the fight scene that suddenly all the banners seem to have vanished except for the ones stuck in the sand. So that's the magic of movies. And I'll comment here that the two main banners that we saw in this scene are the Mythosaur skull, of the blue one on the right, which represents all of the Mandalorians. And then on the left, it's supposed to be the Paz Vizsla emblem, which is the father of the child who is getting um, brought into the Mandalorian full group here which is the symbol from Clan Vizsla, but everything I've seen about this symbol is that it should be pointing to the top right. So I'm curious why it's pointing to the bottom right. If anyone knows why they did that to the symbol, I'd be curious. Uh, let me... So the banners were something that really stood out strongly to me when I watched this episode, and I'm very glad that they integrated them into the culture like this. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. I'd love to talk about this some more.